Back to the phone lines, we'll talk to Natalie, listening in Phoenix, Arizona, on the web. Hi, Natalie. Hi, Hank. Thank you so much for accepting my call. Um, I'd like to very quickly say that I'm, even though I live in the Phoenix area now, I'm originally from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and I'm very sad to know that the Truth Network um, removed your programming. So um, just know that I'll be sharing as much as I can on Facebook Many of uh, the large majority of my Facebook friends and my social network friends and family are from that area. So I'll be doing my part, continue to give and all of that to support the ministry because I really do believe in it. And I'm so thankful for it. It really is life changing. Bless you, Natalie. Those words are a great encouragement to me. Sure. Meanwhile, I, I've been wanting to know the state of King Saul, not just because I could, you know, be involved in something that's really none of my business, but just to understand more the character of God. Also, if I could just, you know, put in a little multifaceted part of that question, um, I'm also curious about when God removed his spirit from King David at one point, he also removed his spirit from uh, Samson. Is this the same uh, type of removal of the Spirit? Are we, are we talking about the same things in these areas of Scripture? Yeah, absolutely. And of course, in Psalm 51, we have David saying, you know, please restore to me the joy of my salvation. Grant a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will turn back to you. And in that same Psalm, he says, do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Now, this Holy Spirit that he's talking about would have been removed from him had he not repented, had he not sincerely panted after God, had he not wanted to be the friend of God and partake of the graces by which he could be cured, by which uh, he could not just give sacrifices that are from an empty heart, but rather sacrifices which are broken spirit, a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. You have the inverse with Saul. Uh, Saul continually violated God's principles. He offered unlawful sacrifices. He tried to kill David when he knew that David was the appointed king of Israel that would succeed him. He tried to kill his own son, Jonathan, So he was a murderer, uh, not only of his friend David, but of his son Jonathan. He commanded the death of innocent priests. He was a mass murderer. He was tormented by demons. The, The Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit. It wasn't just that the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, but an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. So in other words, the Lord allowed evil to come into him because Saul did not want the Spirit of God to inhabit him. He wanted, as the appointed king of all of Israel, to do things his own way, which is the quintessential definition of what rebellion is all about. Repentance is a U-turn. It is turning from sin to God and allowing God's will to grip us, to change us, to conform us to his image. And you think about even uh, the day before his death, he is seeking the counsel of a witch and then ultimately commits suicide. So all of these are an indication that he did not fall upon the graces of God, but in willful opposition to God. The choice of God rendered himself a tool of Satan. And then what about um, Samson? Because God spoke at one point about removing his spirit. Is this something different also? Well, what you have is the different consequence in the same sense that you see it in the life of King David. You know, the one seeks repentance and restoration, restore to me your Holy Spirit, right? Restore a willing spirit to sustain me. The same thing is true in the life of Samson. So you see the good, the bad, and the ugly in his life, but yet in the end you see his faith in God and the Spirit of God returning to him so that he might once again do 
through the Spirit what he was incapable now of doing in the flesh. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you so much. I, I, I really appreciate it. It helps me grow. It helps my family grow. I do understand what you're saying. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> that? That's my little one. One of my little ones. He, we all listen to you. It, they've learned so much from you. 11 and 12 year old boys. Oh, wow. Give them a hug for me. I'll do it. Thank you so much, Hank. Okay, Natalie. Nice talking to you.